بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ولا أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من أيام العمل الصالح فيهن أحب إلى الله من هذه الأيام العشر رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل الأقضة من لساني يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي أمين يا رب العالمين رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم described these ten days as the most beloved days in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of doing good deeds. And he did not specify any deed. He says, any good deed you will do, these are the most beloved in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and this is hadith, sahih hadith. This tells us that we should just try to become self-motivated. If you're not praying tahajjud, start praying tahajjud. If you were missing fajr, which you should not, then try to pray fajr. If you are not reciting Quran every day, try to read in these 10 days, try to build the habit. And not only did you reduce yourself to this individual aspect of worship, but even collective aspect of worship. So if you're not helping the poor and needy, if you are kind of a stingy person, then take out some of the money to help the people in the community, less fortunate people in the community, help the masjid in your community. And if you are not reconciling broken relationship, this is a time when you will do and you will get extra reward because of the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to inshallah forgive our sins inshallah. Second, second disclaimer about these 10 days is that today is a Friday. Next Friday is Yawmul Arafah inshallah ta'ala. Fasting in these 9 days, not 10, fasting in these 9 days is generally recommended. But especially it's highly recommended on Yawmul Arafah. Because Rasulullah sallallahu says about Yawmul Arafah. Siyamu Yawmul Arafah ahtasibu ala Allah in yukaffir sana'a allati qablahu wa sana'a allati ba'dahu. Aw kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That if you'll fast on the Yawm Arafah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to forgive your two year sins. Subhanallah. One previous year and one next year. This is actually the open invitation that if there is anyone who wants to seek forgiveness, if you will show slight flexibility, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually finding a reason to forgive your sins. Subhanallah. So make sure with your family to fast on that day. But if you don't, then this is not a sin. But if you do, then inshallah, the reward is very high, inshallah ta'ala. With that, let's start our khutbah's topic. You know, alhamdulillah, we, the prayer we pray, the hajj we will perform, inshallah, hujjaj this year, may Allah accept their hajj, ameen, ya Rab, is actually almost exactly the same as prescribed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because of his teachings, because of the scholarly work which is being preserved, right? So he used to do ruku and sujood. We are also doing that, right? He also did tawaf in hajj and in umrah. We, the hajjaj, when they will go, they will also do tawaf and sa'i from safar to marwa. In terms of rituals, in terms of forms, in terms of appearance, zawahir, we are actually following the same ibadat as prescribed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But you know what is missing? Are we praying the same salah in terms of quality what Rasulullah and Sahaba used to pray? Not at all. Our mind is all over the place when we are praying. When we are doing Hajj, the essence, the focus, the concentration, the spirit of reviving the legacy of Ibrahim Ali Salam, is it there as it was in the case of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No. So clearly we see two distinctions. You know, I have a body and I have a soul. What will happen if my soul will be taken away? My body will be useless. My body will be useless. Similarly, all these ibadat, they have a body and then they have a soul. Jism and ruh. When it comes to salah, the body of the salah is sajda, ruku'ah. All these things, you have to make wudu before. And which is extremely important. We should not go to the other extreme. Without wudu, your salah is not acceptable. Without sajda, your salah is not acceptable. Without ruku, your salah is not acceptable. But is this the peak of salah only? No. The ruh, the soul of the salah is the concentration, the focus. Inna salata tanhaanil fahshai wal munkar. Salah should actually stop us from bad deeds. But why our salah is not stopping us? Akhimi salata li zikri. We should pray so that we can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why are we not doing that? So basically, we are focusing on body, and that's good. But where is soul? Similarly, in fasting, 
fasting will start at certain time and in certain time you should stay away from food and drink and all these things this is just the body of fast what is the soul of fast la'allakum tattaqun so that you can become god conscious person so that you can leave haram things if you are leaving halal things for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during fasting but most of us just pay attention to the body of the fasting very few of us illa mashallah get the reminder from the soul of the fasting similarly when it comes to the sacrificing on 10th of dhul hijjah we have a body and we have a soul the bodies that we have to sacrifice an animal it have to be either a sheep or a goat or a cow or a camel it have to be of a specific age right the sheep have to be 6 months if not 1 year the goat have to be 1 year the camel have to be more than 5 years and all those those fiqh details and they are extremely important extremely important but what is the soul of sacrificing is this the meat festival so that i can have a barbecue party and there's nothing wrong in having a barbecue party don't take me wrong but what is the essence what is the soul what is the philosophy what is the spirit of the sacrifice why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking me to slaughter an animal yes so we are reviving the legacy of ibrahim alayhi salam that's it <laughs> so let's go back and learn what ibrahim alayhi salam did so that when we are sacrificing an animal animal we can actually sacrifice with its soul not only with its body so inshallah in the next few minutes i will be introducing briefly the sacrifices of ibrahim alayhi salam and primarily if this categorize in four different categories and then we will going to see the soul and then we'll end inshallah soul of sacrifice you know usually people associate if you ask anyone majority of the muslim community why are we sacrificing an animal on eid al adha they will say it's a sunnah of ibrahim alayhi salam everyone agree even if you ask a 10 year old sunday school kid he will say because we are reviving the legacy of ibrahim alayhi salam but very few of us know that it was not only this one sacrifice where he was asked to slaughter his son instead his entire life is starting from his young age then at the community level first family then community then marital life and then parenting every aspect of his life he sacrificed for the sake of allah subhanahu wa taala and that's what we need to learn before we can understand this pinnacle this peak this climax of sacrifice where he was asked to slaughter his son and then you'll see what is the soul of this sacrifice i'll just give you the summary of ibrahim alayhi salam life and then we'll see those four sacrifices especially in his life and then we'll try to make it practicality out of it inshallah ibrahim alayhi salam was born in modern day iraq what we have modern day iraq then he had the encounters with his family with his community we all know the entire history he was thrown in fire i'll come to it in a minute and then later on he was asked to migrate then he went to palestine modern day palestine sham modern day palestine interestingly he had his wife Sara but at the same time he had his nephew with him who was his nephew Lut alayhi salam this is very important in the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Lut alayhi salam along with his wife this wife was not the wife who uh, didn't support Lut alayhi salam in in terms of countering the Sodomites this was a righteous wife so four of them actually migrated from Palestine then from Palestine to Egypt and then from Egypt Ibrahim alayhi salam was asked to leave his other wife Hajar and his son ismail alayhi salam to makkah and come back and that's the entire history of ibrahim alayhi salam by the way just just on a uh, side note when i mentioned lut alayhi salam and pride month the month where people are taking pride on some of the shameless thing according to islamic morality and standards i just want to tell you one thing when allah subhanahu wa taala destroy lut alayhi salam nation because of homosexuality destroy one of the wives of lut ali salam who didn't support the cause of lut ali salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeatedly uses the word ghabirin illa imratahu kanat min al ghabirin and his scholars open this word what is ghabirin means that why allah is using this word for the wife of lut ali salam the chi cheat lut ali salam ibn abbas said no that's not possible for the wife of lut ali salam or for the wife of ambiya the ghabirin here as some of these scholars explain that she did not fully support the cause of lut ali salam 
when he was saying to his nation, this is bad. Did you get it? There are a few things where we are asked to be tolerated in fiqh, if you are following one of the mainstream opinion. But things like this, Islamic paradigm of sexuality is crystal clear. No doubt. Don't use the catchy phrase like tolerance, freedom, choice. No, 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 no. This is haram. And we should be straightforward. It's straightforward. Otherwise, imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would use the word kanat min al wa kanat min al What will be the situation for us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Ameen, Ya Rab. If you see the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam, there are four tests. And I'll just mention briefly. First test, he was isolated from his own family because of his Islamic values. But he did not compromise on his principle. And he was even cancelled, cancel culture. He was cancelled from his community because of Islamic values. That was first test you will see. Second, he was punished by the king because of his beliefs. And you'll see that also. Third, he was tested severely in his marital life that he was asked to drop his wife and his son, infant son, in the middle of the desert. That's a test of tawakkul, trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fourth is the pinnacle, peak, climax of the exam and test that he was even asked to slaughter his son. Let's see one by one very quickly before we can see the practicality of all this. One, when you wake up in this dunya, sooner or later, you will start asking these questions why I am here? What is the purpose of my life? What, what is the purpose of this dunya? Why I was created? It's easy for the person who have a clean heart and who does not have the impact of this modernity on his heart. But when we are opening our eyes in the Western society, which is a godless society, which is a materialistic society, then it's really difficult to ask. And it, this question really becomes a big test. If you find out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of all these problems, then this, this is basically the first test you pass, which Ibrahim alayhi salam passed. Because when we, we know in Surah Al-An'am, and in his community, it was very similar to, the, to our time's American community. Back in the days, Iraq had all possible shirk of that time. All possible idol worship of his time. So people used to worship idols in his time. People used to worship king at his time, and people used to worship all the creation, like sun and moon and a star. So basically they had freedom of worship, whatever they want. It's very, very similar. And just like he was alone, warrior, Ummatan Wahida, maybe you are alone at your workplace. You are alone at your school for the values you are holding. And Ibrahim Islam used his logic, used his rationale to reach to the conclusion that the sun and these stars and these moon cannot be idol, cannot be deity. We all know that from Surah Al-An'am. He realized how can, how can these creation can be God? Then we also know he debated with his father in a respectful way and he debated with his community in a respectful way that why do you worship these creation? Interestingly, he was not only he was not only challenging his father to change his views in religion his father was not only an idol worshipper, his father was an idol manufacturer. You know what it means? So if his father has to follow his son's advice, he does not even have to leave the religion only. He has to, to get bankrupt. <laughs> so there is a financial challenge. But Ibrahim al had the courage. Ibrahim al asked, Ya Abati, lima ta'budu ma la yasma'u wa la yubsir wa la kashaya. Why are you worshipping these idols? They don't talk to you. They don't listen to you. They don't see you. They don't benefit you. What's the point of, I love you, Ya Avati, I love you, but why are you doing this? And his dad gave him stern warning, I will find financially isolate you. I will stone you to death. But Ibrahim Islam had the courage to speak the truth in a respectful way. Do we have this courage? Then move on. We all know what happened. When his entire community went to celebrate on one of the occasions, Ibrahim Islam stayed back. And he went into the place of worship. And we know, He destroyed all the idols in the place of worship, except the one big one. And he put the X on the shoulder of the big idol. He was a smart. He wanted to convey a point. When the people came back, they realized, who is this 
What, who have done this? Our place of worship is almost destroyed. This one idol is remaining. An axe on his shoulder. Who have done it? And then slowly and gradually they start whispering. This is Samirna Fatan Yathkurhum Yuqalu Lahu Ibrahim. That actually we have heard one guy was speaking ill about these idols. He must have been the case. We should ask him to come. Then Ibrahim Ali Salam came. They asked, Ibrahim, you are speaking ill about these idols. Who did that? He pointed out towards the big one. He have the X. Ask him. He's using his logic. He's using a rationale. He's using the philosophies of his time to prove them wrong. You know what happened? They actually realize their mistake. They actually realize their misery and their mis they are so miserable that they cannot even ask this older big idol. But you know what stopped them to accept the truth? Ibrahim al-Islam said this. The reason why they even after they realize and they stop believing in the truth is because The social bond of the community was very strong to leave. Even at the expense of truth, they went with the social bond of community. Socializing, social gathering. So they said, no, no, Ibrahim, you are bad. You done something wrong and you should be punished. This is extremely important. And I just want to take a pause here before I can move to the second test. Can you imagine the courage he would have? He was alone. He didn't have any support. Even we have false idols in our community. Even we have false idols in our community. We have idols like liberal values. We have idols like pluralistic value. If you and entire workplace, entire workplace in your room is asking you or forcing you, I'm using this word deliberately, forcing you to accept LGBTQ lifestyle. Do you have the courage to say, no, that's not my lifestyle? Or will you go with the flow? And if you will accept that, next year they will ask you to accept something else because every year, the goalpost is changing. How long are you will going to keep changing Islam? How long? And do you think you are cool? That's not cool. <laughs> Ibrahim al Islam had the courage. These are my values. I'm not compromising on this. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and our kids from changing Islam. I mean, Ya Rabbi. Second test of Ibrahim al Islam. So he was cancelled from his community. Cancelled. No one invited him for the Walima party. I'm just adding in our times. No one added him into the WhatsApp groups. <laughs> he was socially isolated. Cancelled completely. This is a big, those of you who are grown up with the family, you know what I'm talking about. When you are socially boycotted from your community, uh, when your community boycott against you. Then the second test came. These, this news came to the king. That there's a person who is not worshipping uh, our not having same belief system as we are, you should give him punishment. So king of that time is Namrud. He asked him, Ibrahim, come and tell me who is your God. So Ibrahim al -Islam went, and I just want to tell you briefly how smart Ibrahim al -Islam was. Now he already challenged the idol worship. He already denounced himself from the worships of the sun and the star and the moon. Now the third thing is the king. So he went to debate the king, and you have to see the confidence. You have to see the courage. Do we have this kind of courage, subhanAllah? He is debating with the king. King says, can you tell me who is your Lord? He says, Rabbi al wa yumid. My Rabb, my master, Ibrahim said, is the one who gives life and the one who gives death. King said, Ana wa umid. No, 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 Ibrahim, you're mistaken. I'm the one who gives life. I'm the one who gives death. You want to see? He called two prisoners who had the death penalty. He says, one of them, you are free to go. The other, he killed then and there. And then he says, Ana uhiva umid, Ibrahim, see, I kill whomever I want. I let it go whomever I want. I give life. Ibrahim al Islam realized he's a little smarter, so I have to use other technique. Ibrahim al Islam says, Inna Allah yati bishamsi min al mashriq, fati biha min al maghrib. Ibrahim al Islam said, Okay, my Allah is the one who takes sun from the east to the west. If you are claiming you are Allah, can you take out other way around? Can you take out from the west? Then he was overwhelmed with the response. It's a beautiful logic. Beautiful logic. You are claiming divinity. Do this. You just came out of your diapers and you are doing this. <laughs> and then when people run out of the logic and rational arguments, they tend to take emotional decision. They all decided they will throw Ibrahim al-Islam in fire. 
and the fire was prepared. By the way, this is extremely important. I'll take a few minutes extra today. This is an important topic. Many a times, we see spiritual people are less intellectual people in our times. The people who are spending time in Masajid, spiritual people, sometimes you will see that they are less intellectual people. They might not even able to talk about intellectual thing. And sometimes you will see intellectual people, they might not be spiritual people. From the Ibrahim Ali Salam Sunnah, we are being learning, we are learning. You have to be spiritual and at the same time you have to be intellectual. He knew how to debate. He whole philosophy of debates, he must have read off his time. That's why he's doing this. Then the fire was prepared. We all know the story. Interestingly, the fire was prepared big on the other side of the wall. And he was taken on the top. In Surah Safat, so some of the Mufassirun have said that to inculcate fear in his heart. So he will change his values. He will apologize. But Ibrahim al Islam, they didn't know Ibrahim al Islam, who he was. Ibrahim al Islam realized that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have put this ability in fire to burn me. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his will, whenever he wants to take that ability, he can take that. So when he was thrown in fire, we all know one of the miracles from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kulna ya narukuni bardam wa salam ala Ibrahim. That, oh fire, you should not burn Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have taken the ability from the fire to burn. This only happened with the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he wants, he can do that because we believe that these things do not carry any ability unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give them permission. This is our belief. Then when this happened, now it's a clear sign that Ibrahim and Islam have to move on. When the nation wants to kill their prophet, now if either is Prophet Muhammad sallam, or Ibrahim and Islam, now it's time for migration. Now the third test came. When they, Ibrahim and Islam migrated, he did not only ask Allah, show me the way where to go. He also asked Ibrahim, if Allah, I'm 80 years old. In, from the biblical story. My wife is barren. Rabbi habli min as Give me a son. Give me a righteous son. By the way, this is very interesting. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks in the Quran that a parents are asking for a son, they will say righteous son, righteous progeny, not any son. If you will ask an 80-year-old man, he doesn't have a progeny or son or daughter, do you want evil son? He will say yes because he's so frustrated. Until 80 years, he didn't have anything. But still, Ibrahim Ali Islam says, no, no, Allah, give me righteous son. He's very specific because he knows if he will get evil children, that will increase in his old age. So he says, Allah, give me righteous son. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him righteous son through Hajar, through Hajra, salamun alayha. Immediately when they had son, I will just summarize the entire thing. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked to leave the infant baby and the mother in the middle of the desert. In the middle of the desert where nothing is waiting for them except death. No water, nothing, and come back. He didn't ask anything. And this is interesting mentioned in the books of Sirah when Ibrahim salam was dropping his wife Hajar to Makkah, where modern day Saudi Makkah is. The Kaaba was not there also at that time. The foundations were not led by Ibrahim salam. Ibra Hajra, salamun alayha. Ask this constantly. Why are you dropping us? Where are you dropping us? Ibrahim Islam was quiet. And then Hajar Salamun Alayha asked, Did Allah ask you to drop us here? And then Ibrahim Islam said, Yes, Allah is the one who asked me to drop you here. Then you know the response of Hajar Salamun Alayha. Sometimes we respond to the family, we only remember Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. Hajar said, Radithu Billah in Bukhari. Then I'm content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will protect me. Allah will protect my baby. And then we know what happened. They ran out of water. Then Hajra ran from Safa to Marwa seven times. They didn't have this tiles and air conditioned environment what we have. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, took out Zamzam water. And then see, that's the entire history now. That's what we are doing when we are going for Hajj, reviving the legacy of Ibrahim al Islam and his family. And then the climax of the test came. And Ibrahim al Islam came back with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now he, see, he used to visit his family. Now he, his son became almost 13 year old. Now his son can play around with him. Now his son, son, son can do chores. Now he can see in the eyes of Ismail Ali Salam that I can see that he is the someone who can carry my legacy, carry my prophethood after I'm gone. He have a hope. He's optimistic. At that time, the final climax of exam came for Ibrahim Ali Salam. And Allah SWT tested, When he reached to that age where he can run around with his father, 
قال يا بني إني أرى إني أرى في المنام إني أصبحوك he went to his son that son for three consecutive days مضارع يدل على استمرار for three consecutive days I'm looking at this dream that I'm slaughtering you I'm slaughtering you what should I do now remember this that he was a prophet and prophet's dream are based on revelation so he knows what Allah's mother is asking him to do but he wants to ask his son how is my tarbiyah how did I raise him properly let me ask him son I saw this dream how do you fanzur maza tara what do you see that's a literal translation what do you think about it what do you see son says ya abati I love you dad ifal ma tu'mar do whatever God is asking you to do if God is asking you to slaughter me do it I want to take a pause here first of all he was a prophet if you see a dream of a slaughtering your son go and see therapist don't do it come back to the story can you see the response of the entire family about the challenges and difficulties when he's dropping his wife his wife is supporting him when he is talking to his son about the most difficult test which anyone can go through his son is supporting him that family we need if you need to stand against the flood of the modernity unfortunately we don't have that family support your spouse will pull your leg your kids will pull your leg if you have that family Allah you have the biggest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here and then we know what happened so tajiduni inshallah min as-sabirin and as for me dad you will find me from patient next day watallahu lil jabeen ibrahim alayhi salam said i cannot look at your eyes while sacrificing you he put his forehead on the ground and when he was about to slaughter him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ibrahim qad saddaqta ar-ru'ya ibrahim you fulfilled the dream subhanallah you fulfilled the dream it was not a straight revelation this was just a dream you fulfilled that dream qad saddaqta ar-ru'ya inna kadhalika najzi al-muhsinin truly you are from the muhsinin from the excellent people and then from the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ibrahim slaughtered an animal and ismail was saved what are we learning here? I was going to tell you in the second part of my khutbah. Jazakumullahu khairan. <clears throat> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa amunu ala amma ba'd. This was the sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam. His entire life was full of sacrifice. Individual, young, youth, family, community, married life, and then even parenting. Every time he was tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his response was one. Do you know the dua what we have to read when we are slaughtering an animal? One part of the dua is actually mentioned in Surah Al-An'am. It says, Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. My life, my death, my prayers, my all these sacrifices will be for you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single morning, when a test will come on my way, I will going to follow you. Either you can live a life of misery or you can say, Allah is testing me, I have to perform well. When a test will come. This is what we are learning from Ibrahim alayhi salam. He loved his son, maybe more than any other father, because he was blessed with him after 80 years old. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, will the love of your son forces you to disobey Allah? Let us test this. And Ibrahim alayhi salam took the option of obedience of Allah. We have to ask ourselves when we are sacrificing an animal on Eid al-Adha. What is my sacrifice? What is that one thing, if not more, that is stopping me to become a better person? What is that one haram thing which I am doing, which is stopping me to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In the case of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the potential was of Ismail. In my case, there's so many things which is stopping me to become a better person. Identify that, recognize that, and then slaughter that. That is your inner animal. Many a times we have this animal within us. We slaughter the animal outside on Eid al Adha, but that's just the body. What's the soul of the sacrifice? Coming back to the beginning of the khutbah, soul of the sacrifice, ruh of the sacrifice is to find this inner animal. What is stopping you to become a better person? Some of you have an ego issue. Some of us have an arrogance issue, anger issues, abuse in the marriage, addiction towards some of the super haram thing. Whatever the case is, slaughter that inner animal, slaughter that monster. 
If you don't do that, then you can slaughter four camels, five cows, ten sheep. Good for you. You will get meat. You will get blood of it. But you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need the meat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need the blood. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need is the God consciousness. Did you have the soul? I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this ability to sacrifice from the soul, inshallah ta'ala. I hate to quote Urdu poetry. In the last four or five years in the community, I hate this. I just quoted two, twice or thrice poetry in Urdu, but Allah Iqbal is one of the poets. If you don't know, just Google it. He was actually the person who did tafsir of the Quran in Urdu. Very rare people who did in poetry. The entire tafsir of the Quran in poetry, subhanAllah. He said this about the idea of taking out soul from the Qurbani. I'll translate it, inshallah. He says, Ragu mein wo lahu baqi nahi. Wo dil wo arzu baqi nahi. Namaz o roza o qurbani o hajj. Wo sab baqi hai tu baqi nahi. He says, if you will remove the blood and soul from the body, body will be useless. Similarly, if you remove Allah from the salah, if you remove Allah from the fasting, if you remove Allah from the sacrifice and udhiyah, if you remove Allah from the hajj, you will have rituals, you will have body without soul. We need to inject the souls into these things. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to do that, inshallah ta'ala. Please make dua for the entire ummah. Allah mansuri al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allah makzul man khazal al-Dina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la taj'alna ma'hum. Allah ma la taj'alna zamman illa ghafarta wa la hamman illa farrachta wa la dainan illa qadayta wa la hajata min hawaaj dunya wa la akhra illa qadayta haya arha. Allahu Akbar.